Right, this is split pi then. The left hand side is connected to two 12 volt batteries connected in series to make 24 volts. Um, the right hand side is connected to the load, which in this case is a motor with a flywheel on. You can see here we have an eye loop adapter which isolates split pi from the controlling software. In this case we're using a PC. Uh, you could use any form of um, processor to control it. Um, we have current shunts on the input side, which is a 20 amp current shunt. We have a current shunt on the output side, so you can see the flow of current between the two. And we're using two meters to measure the voltage drop across the shunt. As you can see, positive on the meter means the current is going from left to right. If it shows negative, the current is going from right to left back into the batteries. The decimal point there, if you shifted it one place left, you'd be reading amps. So when this says 10 millivolts, it's actually one amp. The same on both. Okay. So we're going to wind the voltage up from, at the moment, 0 volts on the right hand side, and we're going to bring it up to increase the voltage just using the software control here to slide it across. So as you bring it up, the motor begins to spin and the more you increase the voltage ratio between the two, the higher the voltage is on the output and you can see the current will increase. voltage ratio back the other way, you'll see the current will go in the reverse direction, it will become negative, and that's the current flowing back into the battery, okay? So, shift this down, there you go, we had about 10 amps that time, going back into the battery, and with the voltage control ratio, we've got code 255 choices of voltage output, you can adjust, finally adjust the speed of the motor. Okay, we're going to demonstrate now the voltage ratios capable of a split pi. This meter here is connected to the left hand side, which is connected to the batteries, and this meter is monitoring the output voltage of split pi and we're going to take it from 0 volts up to its 2 times output which will be 48 volts so as we increase the voltage ratio the output will increase so 24 volts on the input we're on code 1 now 230 millivolts on the output as we increase the ratio so the voltage increases and that's, that's on code 5 we've got just over one volt on the output. I'll bring it up a bit faster now. We're going up in codes of 16 at the moment. So we're at four volts on the output, and that's on code 21. I'll bring it up to code 128, which is a straight through connection. And there you can see, 24 volts on the input, 24 volts on the output. And split pi is capable of driving the load to two times the input voltage. So as we increase the voltage ratio up to code 255, we we'll see 48 volts on the output. That's on code 255, and we've got pretty much double the input voltage on the output. We're going to increase the voltage to the motor to 24 volts now, which will spin it up to full speed, and then we'll decrease the voltage back down to 0.2 of a volt, 200 millivolts, and you'll see the energy the, uh, from the flywheel transfer back into electrical energy through split pi and into the batteries. So we'll spin it up to full voltage and then back down again. Right. 
this box here is uh, contains a 12 ultra caps. Uh, in total, they come to 217 farads, and they're connected in series, so they're rated altogether at 32.4 volts. Uh, this is a good demonstration of transferring charge from the left hand side to the right hand side and back the other way. So we've got 24 volt batteries on the left and the ultra caps on the right hand side of split pi. And now we're going to show current going in either direction. So as we increase the voltage ratio, current flows from the batteries into the super caps, charging them. So there we have. 4 amps on the left, 5 amps on the right, and as they charge the current drops. We'll just increase the current a bit more. So that's going from left to right. And now we'll decrease the current by reducing the voltage ratio of split pi and you'll see the current flow in the opposite direction back into the batteries. And now we're taking the energy stored in the capacitors and charging the batteries back up. So we've got 12 amps on the left, 15 amps on the right. And as the energy drops in the capacit capacitors, the current drops also. When you get the voltage ratio set so that the outputs are matched, or the, the left hand side voltage is the same as the batteries and the right hand side voltage is the same as what, what the voltage the capacitor is charged up to, you get no current flow. So as you can see there it's reduced right down, there's only a few hundred milliamps keeping split pi working. So a good, a good example of actually there was no current coming from the batteries. The energy used to keep split pi going was directly from the capacitors.